Hi everyone! So welcome to another vlog here. So our vlog today will be about the digestive system. So let us go first with these few questions. So let's go immediately to part 2 which I will be answering. So part 2, part 1, then part 3 or vice versa. So let's go with part 2. So guys, let's start with the first question in part 2. Brief explain or brief explain the six major steps of digestion. We have six steps of digestion. So we have the indigestion, which is basically taking food into the gastrointestinal tract through the mouth. So this is your food, then you intake it using your mouth. Next, we have the propulsion. So this is the voluntary process of swallowing, so swallowing your food. And the involuntary process of it is the use of peristalsis. So peristalsis actually is the one that moves food through the digestive tract. So it's the one that will push the food in order to move it around your digestive tract. Next, we have the mechanical or the physical digestion. So this is the use of chewing, mixing, and segmentation that prepares food for chemical digestion so it actually is where you break down the food into small particles or small pieces in order the body to and segment its nutrients in order the body to prepare the food for the next step next we have the chemical digestion chemical digestion is actually the enzymic breakdown of food so it uses enzymes in order to break the food into smaller pieces or smaller particles next we have the absorption absorption is a passage of digestive products from the intestinal lumen through mucosal cells and into the bloodstream or lacter so lacterals i don't know how to pronounce this word so Absorption is actually where in your body absorbs the nutrients that you get from the food that you just ate. And there it starts to travel. It starts to travel within your digestive tract. Next, we have the defecation. So it's the elimination of undigested substances from the body in the form of feces. So it's in the form of poo or manure. Or known as stool. Next we have number two. Differentiate mechanical and chemical digestion. So here mechanical digestion in this hand is a chewing, mixing, segmentation that prepares food for chemical digestion. Just like what I have mentioned in number one question. Here is the chemical digestion. So chemical digestion is the enzymic breakdown of food. As what I've said earlier, enzymic breakdown of food, it is actually using enzymes in order to break the food into smaller compounds in order the body to have or to receive its nutrients. Third, third question, what is coprophagia? Coprophagia. So, it is actually known as a condition that describes someone who loves to eat his or her or other people's manure or human waste. So that's actually a condition which exists actually. So, so, sorry, uh, so sorry to those people who are eating or just not eating. So I hope I didn't discuss you guys. So next we're going to have number four. Definition of the word calories in biology. We have calories and chemistry, but in biology, it is actually described as is the unit of heat energy that is equal to the amount of heat needed to rise the temperature of one gram of water so it's very complex right so just in sm more simpler terms you could just say it is the measure of energy in food hi guys we are now in part three number one briefly explain the phases of stomach regulation which we have three we have the cephalic gastric and the intestinal so the cephalic is actually the reflex phase Whereas it's the initial phase of the gastric secretion that occurs before food enters the mouth. So that's the reflex phase wherein you're going to eat your food and you're going to start the reflexes to chew the food. 
Gastric is the phase wherein is a gastric secretion that begins when food enters the stomach. After you intake the food, we have now the gastric, which is the food begins to enter into our stomach. Next, we have the intestinal. Intestinal is actually the phase of gastric secretion that begins when chyme, yeah, chyme enters the intestine. So from sepathic to gastric and intestinal. Number two, describe these layers. Let's go and describe the layers. Number two, mucosa. It is an absorbative and secretory layer of the gastrointestinal tract. It is also composed of simple epithelium cells and is the innermost layer of the GI tract or the gastrointestinal tract. We have the submucosa. Submucosa is relatively thick compared to the mucosa and is also absorbed by elements that pass through the mucosa are picked up from the blood vessels of the submucosa. So this is where elements pass through the mucosa and this is where the submucosa pick up the blood vessels. The blood vessels. We have the muscularis externa, which is responsible for the coordinated con contractions of layer which is known as peristalsis which is which propel the food through the gastrointestinal tract which the muscularis externa consists of an inner circular muscular layer and a longitudinal outer muscular layer so it is a longitudinal outer muscular layer so its function is very different from mucosa and submucosa now, let's answer question number three. Answer the table below. Type of cell, which have the parathyroid cell, chief cell, endocrine cell, and we have the G cell. And what are the substances that they produce and also the function of the substance that they produce. First, we have the parathyroid cell. Substance produced by this type of cell are HCL and intrisenic factor. So the function of these substances is actually HCL is responsible for high acidity in our stomach and is also needed to activate the protein digesting enzymes which is pepsin. So pepsin is also part of it. Next we have the intrisenic factor which is the glycoprotein required for vitamin B12 absorption in the small intestine. So this is very important. These two are very important for the peripheral cell and its function. Next, we have the chief cell, which is the substance is pepsinogen. pepsinogen. So pepsinogen's function is inactive proenzymes form of pepsin. It also helps HCL, which is necessary for the conversion of pepsinogen to pepsin. So it's actually helping each other. So HCL and this pepsinogen are helping each other in order for it to form into pepsin. Next, we have the intero endocrine cells, which secrete the virus hormones into the in other terms, it's actually secreting many types of homo hormones, but actually, it's also secreting gastrin. Gastrin. So, gastrin is actually a peptide hormone that stimulates secretion of hydrochloric acid and gut motility. Next, we have the G cells. G cells actually produces gastrin as well. So, as we explained, gastrin is actually is what you call this a pep peptide hormone that stimulates secretion of hydrochloric acid and gut motility. So, okay guys, let's go to part 1. So, part 1 will be quite long to explain. So, I will start now with the question, why is the digestive system considered as the most diverse and complicated organ system in the body? So, we know that the organ system is very complex. We could say because 
it is actually composed of four main components and is also composed of a lot of organs in the body. So, the, the answer here is that the principal functions of the digestive system is actually to digest and absorb ingested nutrients and secrete waste products. And the next here is that most nutrients in our body is actually very complex and it's very hard to be digested. That is why different organs will work with each other in harmony and in order to break down those food into simpler which the body could intake is to have these enzymes in order to break them down and these nutrients will be absorbed into our body. Brief explain the pathway of food from the first and to the last step of digestion. So here we need to mention three terms. So yeah, three terms. We have the bolus, the time, and the peristalsis, which I mentioned in part two. So here, first, glands in mouth pop pumps out saliva. So there, you you really wanted to eat, so there. Next is once inside the mouth. Chewing combines with slushing saliva to turn the food into a moist lump called bolus. So bolus is actually the moist lump, which is actually food and your saliva mixed together, which is the small, that moist lump, lump is called bolus. Enzymes present in the saliva break down any starch, then the food goes to the esophagus. Afterwards, Nerves in the surrounding esopho esophagus tissue sense the bolus present and triggers peristalsis. So let's now see peristalsis. Peristalsis, which is a series of defined muscular contractions that propels the food into the stomach. So from your esophagus, it will propel the food going to the stomach where it arrives and reaches the stomach where in muscular tissue muscular stomach walls rather which bound the bolus breaking it into chunks so once in the stomach the stomach walls will start to pound pound the bolus and make it into chunks smaller chunks next number six so we're in number six already hormones secrete spice cells in the lining triggers the release of acids and enzymes rich juices from the stomach wall that start to dissolve the food and break it into proteins. So once from the bolus, it will be it will be dissolved, which the food will start to break down and it will be formed into proteins because of this enzyme and which juices in the stomach wall. Next, number seven. These hormones also alert the pancreas, liver, gallbladder to produce digestive juices. So this is actually called and transfer bile. So your food from bolus it forms into chunks. After chunks, it will become into bile. B I L E. Bile is actually a yellowish green liquid that ingests or digests fat in preparation for the next stage. So it is actually yellow green in color, and it's also digesting fat. For it to prepare for the next stage. Number eight, after three hours in the stomach, the one shaped bolus is actually now a chyme, C H Y M E, which is actually a frothy liquid and is ready to move to the small intestine. So your chyme is already a liquid. From solid, it was chunks, and after that becomes liquid liquid and there it becomes the chyme. Next is the liver sends bile to the gallbladder which secretes it into the first portion of the small intestine which is called duodenum D -E, no, D -U -O -D -E -N -U -M, duodenum Next is 10. In the duodenum it dissolves the fat floating in the slurry chyme so that it could be easily digested by pancreatic 
and intestinal juices that have reached into the area. So that is where your slurry chime started to become easily digested and here comes the pancreatic and intestinal juices who comes in the area. Next is the enzyme-rich juices break fat molecules down into fatty acids and glycerol for easy absorption into the body. So that's where it will start to break down little by little from complex to simpler until our body could fully ingest it and carry out the final deconstruction of proteins into amino acids and carbohydrates into glucose. Next is step 12. This is quite long. It, help, it happens in the small intestine's lower regions, jejunum in the ilinum, which are coated in millions of tiny projections called villi, V-I-L-L-I. It creates a huge surface area to maximize molecule absorption and transference into the bloodstream. So this is where the so this is where it starts to float and it starts to float and its surface area will start to maximize until until the absorption of each molecule, which is like the proteins, the fats, will start to be absorbed by the B light and into the bloodstream. Next is the blood takes them on the final leg of their journey to feed the body's organs and tissues. Leftover fiber, fiber, water, dead cells make it into the large intestine also known as the colon. So that is where the byproducts after taking out the, the nutrients, so what is left over is actually the water, the fiber, and the dead cells which it will stay almost to the last leg of its journey. Here, body drains out most of the remaining fluid through the intestinal wall. What's left is a small mass called stool. S-T-O-O-L. So that stool is actually basically our manure, which is still inside our body. So after taking out the fluid, the fiber, what remains there is like the dead cells and other components, which is not digested. So it actually becomes the stool. Next. The colon squeezes this byproduct into a pouch called rectum. So the rectum, where nerves sense it expanding and actually tells us or tells our body when it's time to expel the waste. So it's actually when the time when you really feel like releasing it, you're like, I can't hold it anymore. So that's like the signal that you really need to go to the toilet and release it down. Next is, and last one, the byproducts of digestion exit through the anus. So yeah, after the rectum is the anus. And it ends there. Actually, that's it. It actually ends there and your waste is out of your body. So that's where you start to sit down in the toilet bowl and you're really releasing it. And there it comes out. And that's the end product of its journey. So typically, it lasts for 30 to 40 hours for it to be completed. So basically, that's it.